Hello! <laughs> Hello, everybody! I really hope you enjoyed that little teaser trailer of Chronos of Crime 1900. Let me get myself up on the full screen now. Oh, here a second. There we go. Okay, I'm with you now. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Angelo. It's lovely to have you here. It's a lovely evening here in the UK. Uh, excited for this too, says Bobby. Bobby, it's lovely to see you. I will say we'll be back to some Kingdom Rush uh, campaign Let's Plays very soon. Uh, so this evening, the focus is all about Chronicles of Crime 1900, the second game in the Millennium series that we'll be releasing next week. Please let me know if you can hear me in chat. I hope everything's going okay. I am trying a lot of new things tonight. We've got screen sharing. We're gonna have the app, we're gonna have the game, and we're gonna play the tutorial. So no big spoilers. But we are going to play a case tonight, and I've not done the tutorial for Chronicles of Crime 1900. I have done the first case, but I got a bit cocky and jumped into the case and didn't do the tutorial. So I'm hoping, everybody in chat, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, that you're going to give me a little bit of help. Because <laughs> the last thing I want to do <laughs> is feel the tutorial live, right? Um, exciting times also. Excuse, hello, Belle. How are you doing? Thank you so much for stopping by. So without much further ado, I'm going to keep playing with my phone a little bit, which is down here, because I don't want it to lock and everything to, <laughs> and everything to break on me. Um, yes, Bobby, it's not always amazing that uh, I get complicated, but hopefully, hopefully I'll make it work, right? Hopefully technology sticks with me this evening. So without much further ado, let me get our star of the show, 1900. So, and hid hid hidden behind 1900 is our dice, is dice tar cat. Meow. Uh, nice dark cat out of the way for a second. So for anyone that doesn't know, Chronicles of Crime is really one of our smash hit titles. It is a cooperative game that you can play with one to four players and the goal of the game is to solve crimes. This one is very special because it's a standalone game that plays right out of the box, but it's the middle of three games in the Millennium series. We had 1400 released at the end of last year. We had 1900 releasing next week and then we'll have 2400 releasing later this year. This was uh, a game that raised over a million dollars on Kickstarter, thanks to a huge amount of support from the backers who just brought this game into the light in a way that we can't even explain. It was incredible. We were so, so thankful for all the support. And now it's coming to stores uh, and, and it's now widely gonna be available. So let's dive in. I'm gonna show you a little bit, but actually, hold on, I should look at the box first, really, shouldn't I? I mean, on the side and on the front predominantly, you're gonna see our main protagonist. That's Victor Lavelle. Now, Victor Lavelle is actually a descendant of Abelard Lavelle from, 20, uh, from 1400. And uh, what is the reverse of descendant? I don't know. What is the opposite of descendant? Because Calia Lavelle in 2400 is a descendant of Victor. Someone in chat who's more intelligent than me, please goodness tell me what word I am missing. Ancestor. Yes, that works. Um, this is the back of the box. Not too much to see here, but it gives you a little bit of flavor on what you're gonna find. You're gonna find characters, locations, uh, you're gonna find evidence cards, puzzle cards, which are the brand new mechanic for 1900, and obviously show you a little bit of a teaser for the virtual reality crime scenes. But we're gonna dive into the tutorial, so you're gonna get a feel for all of this. And the key thing is that you don't need to read the rules if you don't want to. There is a rule book in here. It's incredibly, incredibly skinny because you don't need to read them. Oh, I just flicked them flick them across the table because the tutorial that we're going to play today together will give you everything you need. Excited to try this out. Thank you so much. Oh, hello, Kim of Tabletop Rebellion. It's lovely to have you in. And yes, I cannot wait to see what you hear what you think of this. That would be awesome. Bobby says, is there an option Lucky Duck Games to purchase all of the Chronicles of Crime stuff? Uh, will that bundle include the game when it comes out? I want to buy them all. So at the moment on our website, luckyduckgames.com, you can get a bundle with the original Chronicles of Crime. So we call that Chronicles of Crime London Forensic. Uh, which is way over there. Um, and it has a couple of expansions, the Noir expansion set in 1950s LA and the Welcome to Redview expansion, which is a little bit more relaxed, a bit more stranger things, kind of teenagers trying to solve weird problems in a 1980s town. So the base game and those two expansions are available as a bundle. And they will also have on the website, and you can get it right now, the Millennium Series bundle, which has 1900, 1400 and 2400. Now bear in mind that 2400 will not be playable um, until later this year when all the cases are added. So diving in to the box of 1900, I'm gonna read the little opening blurb to you here. So you are Victor Lavelle, a young ambitious journalist working for a newspaper called Le Nouvelle de Paris. It's the year 1900, the middle of the Belle Epoque and Paris flourishes. There are so many stories to cover, the Exposition Universale, the Summer Olympics, the opening of the first metro station. 
but as a Lavelle, a family famous for solving crimes since the Middle Ages, you're much more interested in murders, kidnappings and robberies. Having a police commissioner as an uncle helps you to be among the first ones to know about them and your wits often make you the first one to find the perpetrator. So it's setting the scene a little bit differently. As I mentioned, we have a little rule book which is going to give you uh, your contents, it's going to give you how to get set up, it's going to give you a little bit of information about how you're going to play the game and how the puzzle cards work and a little bit about how you scan for clues and how time passes and that really is it <laughs> very simple very very straightforward there's the team there is 1400 and uh sorry excuse me there's 1400 and 2400 which are yet to come so you can really skim through this but we're going to play the tutorial so we don't need that put that aside here we have our evidence board with this go gorgeous little insignia which i'm curious to see if any of you play all of the games we'll start to see that appearing anywhere and this is our evidence board which is going to make space for evidence cards, evidence cards that we know a little bit about but don't have, and also some characters, but we'll learn about that as we're playing through. We've then got what I like to call in the UK, you guys can let me know what you think the best name for this is, but it's an insert, but it's got this, what I love to call uh, like a chocolate tray cover. <laughs> to me, this has got that, ooh, there's gonna be sweeties under this uh, kind of feeling. And it is worth saying that I have opened mine already. So all of your cards will come wrapped and your uh, locations will come bundled. Um, I'm going to buy all of it, I've decided. Thank you so much, Bobby. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing time playing it. I was gonna give you a lot of cases to do. That's You're gonna be there a while. <laughs> Um, so yes, I've taken the cellophane off all of mine already because I have played the first case. Hello, hello, uh, Kimilox, nice to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Um, so what are we gonna look at first? Let's look at the characters first. And uh, So I've got a deck of, I think it's 30. Yes, 30 different characters here. And hopefully, if I've set this up right, maybe I have to do this. There we go. Uh, we'll get a little look ahead at what some of the characters look like. So you'll see that they really do represent the, the people of Paris in 1900. So it is a predominantly Caucasian, um, uh, mix of characters that we have. We do have some Romani. We also have some um, sort of traveling and, and different different regions of, of France and Paris um, appearing throughout and some different um, ethnicities and, and characters from different cultures, but largely predominantly because we're looking, hello, Vincent, green screen. I know. <laughs> I know, right? Technically it's an orange screen. It's an, or it's an orange screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, this is to give you a feeling of, of what 1900 is like. And if you play all three games uh, in the series, you'll notice that in 1400, medieval times, a lot of the uh, roles, especially the higher up roles, um, are really owned and controlled by male characters. In 1900, that starts to change a little bit. And then in 2400, it changes massively as we have lots more different uh, genders, lots more representation, and lots more different cybernetics and augments on, on, on personalities as well. So throughout the three games in the Millennium series, you're going to see a large different rainbow of different characters depending on which game that you are playing. So this will give you a little feeling for what some of the characters are gonna look like. There are 30 of those. And I will come back to one of my favorite characters in all of Chronicles of Crime is Charlotte, who's our newspaper assistant who's gonna help us with puzzles. But we're gonna come back to her a little later because almost certainly she's gonna pull me out of a hole or two. Um, that is a great question, Camilla. So quick, I'll, I'll do this as a quick shout out. Uh, when are you planning on opening the Pledge Manager for Kingdom Rush? Hopefully, yes, as Vince has said in chat, hopefully this week, all being well, we are continuing to launch it on GameFound and they're implementing a few little things for us to kind of make it smooth. So apologies for this delay, but all being well, fingers crossed this week. Um, so the next thing inside the box, I'm gonna bring out the locations. So, oh, the main home location in many of the Chronicles Crime games represents your office or your kind of studio. In this case, it's actually Victor Lavelle's uh, news agents, uh, just news agents, that's not the right word, news agency or news office. Um, so the idea is that you'll be working as a journalist and reporting back at the end of each day to complete your stories. What we're also going to have, though, of course, is about, about a bunch of sights and sounds from all of Paris. Some you may recognize and some you may not. So, for example, straight away, we have the very famous windmill from Moulin Rouge there. And all of the locations in this game, just like 1400 and 2400, are double sided. So you're actually going to get a wide variety of different, what some very rich and grand and luxurious locations, some more marketplace down to earth, and some more dingy and dark and a little bit more uh, full of intrigue. You're gonna to get to go along the River Seine, 
you're going to get to visit Notre Dame. You're going to get to visit all the houses and homes and, and places all throughout Paris, including what I love about this time period. So for any of you that don't know, 1900 and very much pre-First World War was a really interesting time. They call it the Belle Epoque, essentially, because it was a time full of rich innovation, full of artistry, full of creation, full of innovation. And one of the big things that happens in this time is you have metro stations um, being built and running for the first time. Um, so if you think of it as a time period when you have the first, uh, you're going to have the first automobiles, you're going to have telegrams being used, you're going to have Morse code kind of starting to die out as, as the technology kind of catches up to it. And you're actually going to get to delve into a little bit of science and laboratories whenever you're exploring 1900, which I think a lot of people will really enjoy. So a whole bunch of locations. Now next, I can't really dive into these too much, but whoa, whoa, whoa. So these big oversized cards, these are puzzle cards. So this is for the first time in a Chronicles of Crime game, we have physical puzzle cards that you're going to need to solve. And unlike me, we do have a warning <laughs> that says, stop, <laughs> don't look, <laughs> unless you do what I did and just go ahead and start reeling through them. We will see a couple of these in the tutorial. So I'm not going to show too many now. We'll just see what comes out in the tutorial. You will have the tutorial plus four unique cases to solve. So don't worry, we'll not be so, uh, spoiling anything tonight. The next thing we have are two decks of special evidence and evidence category cards. So this is a stack of 38 different ev evidence category cards. Now, if you've ever played a Chronicles of Crime game before, you're going to be familiar with some of these. So, you, for example, when we're looking for evidence in a crime scene, <laughs> don't talk about my sausage fingers. Uh, we're going to have food. We're going to have papers. We're going to be looking for footprints and traces. Um, we're going to have vehicles, which for this time period um, will be very, very different to what you may be used to in the modern times. Um, other things, again, to keep in mind is things like photos. And cameras, this is really a time period where photography is becoming a more common thing. And also writing tools and materials are still really important. Looking for notes and letters, looking for little curios that are left behind are gonna make a big, big, big difference to solving your case. So that's a deck full of 38 different um, evidence categories that we'll use for every single case. And in these ones, I'm not gonna show you because every case, because it's unique and story driven, we have 15 unique special cards that are only going to be used um, in special circumstances whenever you can, uh, find unique items, story-driven elements, or things about a character. Sometimes these can relate to extra little secrets and extra little Easter eggs, because you can solve a case, or you can go above and beyond and score extra points by finding out every last little detail about who, what, when, and why, or specifically the weapon, or the little letter that led to everything beginning and becoming a, a big case worth your attention. And these little special item cards are a key part of that. Hello, Jeremy. It's lovely. Thank you for stopping by, and thank you for saying hey. I love it when people come in and say hello. It's really, uh, it's it's a long time since I've done a stream on my own. Um, and it's lovely to have chat, get involved in, and have a, a, a wee conversation. I appreciate it. And please stay around and help me solve this tutorial because I am almost certainly going to do terribly at it. Um, everything, of course, goes into this beautiful insert. So to pop it back in, we've got our puzzle cards. We've got our locations. We have our evidence category, special item cards. And then we have our characters go there. So it all goes back in with our chocolate covered tray. Super nice, super nice and good. But anyway, I'm gonna get it out and we're gonna start playing. Um, <laughs> Bobby James, did you want to scan this food card because you saw Sasha's fingers? Oh no, that's, <laughs> don't like the idea that this is becoming a thing. Right, let me set up the game and we're gonna dive in and play the tutorial. Hopefully my phone is going to uh, play ball and I'm going to be able to show you everything exactly as I want. So to set up the game, we put the evidence board out in front. The great thing about this is you can set it up however you like. So I actually, a little tip, I like to play this with two people on the sofa um, and just lay out the case in front of us on a coffee table. And I like to screencast my phone using Chromecast to, uh, to the TV and do it so I can see the crime scene and I can see all the evidence and the conversation and everything happening on the TV and we can all read it together, which I just adore. Um, I don't know if that's something you've ever done, but I highly, highly recommend it. Does mean the VR glasses are something I don't use as often as I would like, but it's a great way to play. Now what's sneaking through, oh, that's sneaking through. My green screen was getting invaded there. Now we have to start with our news let me get rid of the sausage fingers uh, we have to start with our our news office here so i'm going to move this up a little bit 
put that there. And then I'll keep all the other locations just in my hand ready to be pulled out. I'll get my characters. I will get my puzzle cards. I will split my items into evidence categories and also into special items and place these up here as well. Ready to go. Now we do need one character who is Charlotte, who I mentioned earlier. She is going to reside in the newspaper office, ready to help us should we need help with any of the puzzles. Now I'm hoping, big, big fingers crossed here that if I unlock my phone, you guys are going to be able to see this. I'm going to go into 1900. Let's see how quickly this updates. Oh, it looks like it's going a little bit slowly. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. So bear with me just a quick moment. I'm going to quickly reset my app. And then hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, I think now, yes, we're a little bit behind, but that looks good. Hello, Stephanie, I have all three of the expansions. I'm excited to play them all soon. That's amazing. And don't forget, the great, the great thing about this is you just need each box. So if you've got 1400 or 1900 or 2400, you just pick them up and play. Like they're, they're, We call them standalone because the idea is they're games in their own right. You don't need any other game to, to build them on. Um, so you just if you want to pick up 1400 and do medieval, or you want to pick up 1900 and do industrial, you can just jump in and do that. Okay, so right now, we did release some of the cases a little bit early for our backers, just a little bit. We wanted to do it a little bit more, but it ended up being just a few weeks early because the backers who supported us and brought these games to life, is, is they're so important to us, and it's really a huge part of, of why this game has, has come to retail. So right now in the, in the app, we have the tutorial, we have Captured in Frame, we have Boulevard of Death, which is actually two cases that are linked in a mini campaign. And then upon the game's release, which will be next week on the 29th, we'll have a ray of hope as well. So four cases in the tutorial. We're going to dive into the tutorial. So it says, discover the game with this tutorial case and solve the mystery of a violent death in a telegraph office. Note, this is not a full-length scenario, but rather an introduction to game mechanics. Some graphic content. So yes, beware. There will be some gruesome scenes. Not gruesome. But, you know. All right. Please warm up your brains, get some mental flexing on, because I'm going to need your help, no doubt. So the newspaper office, day one, 9 a.m. Welcome to the Chronicles Crime 1900 tutorial. Disclaimer, this scenario is an introduction game. It explains how to play without giving you a real investigative challenge. Setting myself up here for failure. <laughs> Tap next to start. Hello, Dana. Lovely to see you. Oh, Dana. Do you know, I need to do a quick personal shout out to Dana. You sent me a lovely birthday message. And I also just found out about an hour ago, Dana, that you posted on the Destiny's uh, comments. I actually missed that because um, it's a campaign that I, it was before I joined Lucky Duck. So thank you for doing that. It's incredibly kind. I really appreciate it. Have you already opened uh, backing for 2400? So yes, you can uh, You can pre-order 2400 on our website as part of the bundle, but it won't be released until later this year. Um, could you play the game in Polish, please? I cannot, unfortunately. However, we have both a French and Polish studio and marketing team now. So I think there is a chance that in the future we could have some Polish live streams and I will certainly pass on that request. All right, so tutorial. Chronicles of Crime is a cooperative game in which all the players work together to solve a crime. You play as Victor Lavelle, a journalist solving crimes during the Belle Epoque in Paris and writing about them in a newspaper. I don't know, I think you're gonna to have to, this is my English storytelling voice, I think maybe is what's happening right now, which is maybe not befitting of the time period or the location, but it's, it's you take what you're given. <laughs> In case the text displayed in the app won't fit in the screen, you can drag it up and down to see the remaining part. Tapping the three lines in the bottom left of your screen opens the menu where you can access the history feature. This allows you to browse through all the screens displayed so far. This is incredibly, incredibly helpful if you need to go back and find out what a particular suspect says when you question them. Start by setting up all the game components referred to page three of the rulebook. I cheated a little bit because I knew. So we've got the evidence board, we've got the uh, newspaper office, we've got Charlotte, we've got the character deck, the puzzle deck, the evidence category cards, the special item cards, and our locations. So we're good to go. 
I'm going to skip, skip. That's fine. Make sure I didn't skip anything. So separate Charlotte's character card from the character cards and put it in the home location in the frame on the left-hand side of the board. See, I, I should have trusted the tutorial. I'm jumping ahead, but the tutorial absolutely had me covered. Um, keep all of the other character cards in a pile face down. Charlotte, Hibou, is your colleague. She's always willing to help you solve puzzles, which will be explained later in the tutorial. She's one of the three recurring characters you meet in every Chronicles of Crime 1900 scenario. Separate the evidence category cards from the, evidence, the special item cards, have done, and get familiar with the evidence categories. So I think we'll come to that a little bit later and I'll ask you guys for your input there. Keep them face up and browse them freely during the game. Uh, do you know what? Let's put a few of them out. I'm not sure, you guys can let me know at home uh, if you can actually see these. I think they might be a little, a little on the small side. What do you think? I think that might be a little small for you to read. But you can let me know if you can see them. Bobby said, I might have missed it earlier, but if you buy the bundle, it won't stop you from getting the other items. Right? No, exactly right. You can buy the bundle. We'll send everything to you, but you just won't be able to play the cases for 2400 just yet. It will be later this year. Do you know what I think? Will I lay these all out? No, I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to actually reach them. So I'm not going to lay these all out. And I'll read them to you guys when it comes time to searching virtual reality crime scenes. Uh, doo -doo. So keep the puzzle cards in a face down pile. During the course of each scenario, you'll be informed when to reveal these cards. Tap next when you're ready to play. Are we sitting comfortably? I think we're ready to play. Early in the morning, you arrive at the editorial office of Nouvelle de Paris, Charlotte, Number one, we'll see it refers to the number on Charlotte's card in the top left here. So it tells, so I know this is Charlotte, is already at her desk, giving you a welcoming nod. Nice to see you, Charlotte. Just as you sit down, the voice of the editor-in-chief, Jonas J. Jacquemard, uh, I hope Vince still isn't in the chat, <laughs> summons you to his office. So this is number two, and it's going to tell me, take the character card, number two, and place it on the location board. So here we go. So this is Jacques, the editor-in-chief. And I'm going to place it onto here. Now, don't get too comfortable in that chair, says Monsieur Jacques Mard. I have an assignment for you. I've set up an interview with employees of the local telegraph office located not far from here. Go there and ask about their work. See what they think about the telephone taking over the world. All right. Hey, I, I, I'm cool. I want to go and see what about the telephone taking over the world. So Jonas J. Jacquemard is your employer. He gives you new assignments and waits until midnight for you to finish your work on each article. He is a recurring character that you meet in every Chronicles of Crime 1900 scenario. All right, Jonas, we got this. Jonas is a good reference, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, a location L has been mentioned. Place the corresponding location board on the table. Do this every time a new location is mentioned. So, let me go through the locations and find L. There we go. So, this is going to live on the table. I will put this somewhere. Oh, what have I done? There we go. Get out of the way. Um, and then we'll put it. What I'll do actually is I'll move this over a little bit and then I'll put this just here with me. I think that works. You can see that. Okay. So this is the new location. This is going to represent the telegraph office. And we're about to go and head here and ask them what they think about the telephone. Got a feeling they might not be super keen on the telephone. To travel to the location, tap next and scan the QR code printed on the board. All right, so here we go. We've got the scan technology. So I can give you a thumbs up through the, there we go, through the camera and camera. So you can you can set this in two different ways. So it automatically scans, or you can set it up so you have to touch to scan. I like setting up the touch to scan just to make sure it only does it when I want to. You walk a couple of streets and arrive at the entrance of the telegraph office. The sign on the door says it's closed, but it should be open by now. Peeking through the window, you see someone is inside and decide to try your luck. You enter. Inside, you find two men standing over a dead body, 23. So we have a dead body, 23. So here is our dead body. One of them is wearing a police uniform, and you recognize him immediately. It's your uncle, Commissioner Norbert Lavelle, number three. All right. There is our uncle, Commissioner Norbert Lavelle. Victor, what a surprise, says your uncle. What are you doing here? The other person, a middle-aged manager wearing glasses. There we go. 
Number nine, appears too overwhelmed by the situation to speak. This is great. I love the interactive use of the phone, selling me a dream here as, but not my bank account. <laughs> Well, I'm very glad. I'm very glad you're enjoying it, Bobby. Please, goodness, get ready to help me because I'm sure things are about to get interesting. Now we've found a body. <laughs> so, tutorial. More characters have been mentioned to you. Take their character cards 3, 9, and 23 and place them all on the location board L. So we have our deceased, we have the manager, and we have our uncle. Okay. If you want to interact with a character, scan the QR code on their card. For now, try talking to Norbert. So let's talk to our uncle. Victor, I don't know what kind of story you wanted to write here, but I have something better. <laughs> a real mystery, that's certain. I'd like another keen pair of eyes to look around. Maybe you'll notice something interesting. Police Commissioner Norbert Lavelle is your paternal uncle. He often shares details about the Parisian criminal world and you help him with his investigations. He is another recurring character. Uh, why do you replace the cars on the white bits and not the actual location? Um, so actually, it's to see the location because it's pretty. Um, you can absolutely pop them right on the location, but we actually kind of uh, put these little spaces at the bottom of each so you can kind of space them out and it helps as a visual reminder to remember what is at each location. Mm -hmm. So that way you can see the artwork and you can remember that this is the telegraph office. Um, so you're now in interrogation mode with Norbert and can ask him about people or objects by scanning their cards. You're only allowed to use cards that have already been revealed to you. Start by asking Norbert about himself. Scan his card, the body and the manager. So you can see now that at the top of the screen, it shows Norbert Lavelle's face and his name. So I know that I'm engaged in interrogation mode with him. So let's ask him about himself first. This isn't the first case you've assisted on, Victor. I always welcome your help, especially now the Exposition Universal World Fair is keeping many of my officers busy. All right, fair enough. So he's easy a little light on man power. Let's ask him about the manager. He's the manager of the Telegraph office. He called the police early in the morning, claiming he found the body. After you search the office, ask him a few questions and see what he knows. Right. Who's taking notes? <laughs> Telegraph uh, manager called the police, claiming he found the body. Right. That's key. Let's ask about the body and see what our uncle knows. Your uncle points to the stairs with broken railings. Was this an accident or a murder? Victor, I want you to find out if anyone was involved with this man's death. And if that's the case, where is the perpetrator now? Your mission has been described to you. You need to figure out what happened in the telegraph office and find whoever killed the man. There, These are the things you'll be asked about when you decide to finish the game. According to the manager, the person working here during the night shift was a telegraph operator named Agnes, which is 17. Let's find out more about her. So a character 17 has been mentioned, but you don't know her whereabouts. Put her card 17 in the unlocated character slot on the evidence board. So basically, Agnes is whereabouts unknown, not tied to any location that we have currently no uh, awareness of. Put a card in the unlocated character slot. Boom, done. You may want to look around the crime scene and see if you can find anything useful. To search the office, first end the conversation by tapping the goodbye button, then tap the search the scene button. You'll have 40 seconds to look at a scene in virtual reality. Physically turn around to check the scene in 360 or swipe left, right, up or down and pinch to zoom. Describe what you see to the other players so they can find all matching categories among the evidence category cards. Right, get your fingers at the ready because I'm about to go into virtual reality and I'm going to need you all to shout out what you see that you think might be worth looking at. When the time runs out, you or another player can search again for clues. Uh, they should scan all the evidence category cards you picked to find what clues you find. Now, so I'll say goodbye. Um, so I'm going to hopefully, if I switch to my VR mode, that you're only going to see half of the screen because unfortunately my screen capture device is not amazing um, and doesn't like this too much. But I'm hoping that you'll be able to get a feel for what I'm showing. You'll see at least part of it. Okay, here we go. So there we go. All right, well, there's our body for sure. Uh, there's a lady's bag and a, a very nice looking box actually, which looks like has been emptied. 
got some flyers, obviously some telegraph stuff, so that makes sense. We've definitely got a book with a slip of something in it. Uh, photograph with some... Wait, is that Agnes? Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on, I think that's Agnes. I, I really, really do think that's Agnes. We'll, we, I'll, call, I'll show the character card to you in a minute, but I think that's her. Oh, no, I've hardly looked anywhere. Okay, we're going to have to... We're, oh, there's the reeling. Okay, we're going to have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> do I want to give the mobile device to another player so they can observe the scene? Yes, I do. I'm going to give it to myself again. Right, hold on. I'll be better this time. I'll be, I'll be better, I promise. Okay, so wait, I want to go around to the broken reeling. Oh, my goodness. There's the ceiling. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow, that's been, like, demolished. So that's really, I mean, I mean, yeah. He's fallen onto something. I'm not too sure. what that, Is that, like, a photographer? Oh, oh, that's the reeling that's lying around him. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, so I'm just I'm making sure that I'm not missing. So photograph, book, papers, box, flyers, bag, uh, technology maybe. Obviously blood and a body. Oh wait, what's in his hand? Oh, can you guys see that? Oh hold on. Oh, it's hard for me to show you. He's got he's got a bow tie in his hand. All right, okay, okay. All right, look up. <laughs> I think I looked up for a very 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 brief moment. Hopefully. This will go back to normal, and you can see. Okay. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, like, to check this out. I think the photo, I think the photo had Agnes in it. I think this was her. Um, I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell definitely, but I think that's, that's, that's certainly something I think could be true. Right, so I'm going to go through the stack of evidence cards. So, again, there's 38 different um, evidence categories. So, jewelry, I'm going to say no. Uh, blood and organs, yes. I mean, we definitely we definitely have blood, right? Melee weapons? I don't think so. Furniture? Maybe. If we count maybe the reeling of the chairs, but I'm not sure if there was anything uh, super interesting. Liquids? I don't think so. Decorative items? I don't think so. Bottles? Was the vase? The va it was more of a vase, right, than a bottle? Maybe. Medicine and drugs, I don't think so. Sports equipment, no. Firearms, no. I'm kind of cheating. Usually with multiple people, we'd be kind of doing this together, but this is fine. Letters and messages. I'm definitely going with that one because there was certainly something in that book. And Bobby was saying, um, what was the design reason for the time stuff? It looks like he has been shoved and grabbed their bow tie. The reelings wouldn't have broken like that. You, right. So, yeah, the reason for the, the the time is just to put a little bit of pressure and a bit of cooperation so you're all kind of working together. If you just have it nonstop, then it's kind of free to, to look at it over and over again. Whereas each time you look, you're spending a little bit of time looking. So for people who want to try and get five out of five stars and get the best possible score, you get rewarded for being able to do it quickly and find all the evidence well. If you don't, if you need multiple attempts, it's no problem. You can still solve the case uh, and just maybe not find every little nook and cranny. Uh, cords and restraining devices, no. Keys and locks, no. Headwear, I don't think so. Writing tools and materials, maybe, maybe. Oh, and sorry, you did ask other questions as well. Um, it looks like he was shoved and grabbed their bow tie. Bobby, I am all about that. I think that's right on the money. Uh, the railing wouldn't have broken like that uh, if you uh, tripped, yes. 100%. I am on the pushed to his demise and like reached out and tried to grab and fell and the murderer ran off, didn't go down to the body to remove the bow tie. Like, although the box was empty, right? The blue box. Uh, photos and cameras, no vehicles, no footprints and traces, maybe. Papers, definitely. Food, no. Table or no. Paintings and drawings, I don't think so. Kitchen utensils, no. Doors and windows, no. Books and magazines, maybe. Betting no, clothes yes. I bet that's going to be tied to the uh, bow tie. Hopefully, I, I hope. Um, animals don't think so. Tools don't. Bags and purses yet. Yeah, there was a there was a burr. There was a uh, so they took something uh, from Agnes's desk. Interesting. That's a great shout. So if I go because if I go into my history, I can go back and I can see. What did it say about Agnes? So I'm going back, going back. So according to the manager, the person working here during the night shift was a telegraph operator named Agnes. So she was she was meant to be there the night, and the managers come in and find the body in the morning. So she's currently a suspect, right? 
Like we have to be like, we need to find Agnes. Uh, games and toys, no. Plants, no. Toilets and hygiene, no. Flammable objects, I don't think so. Trash, I don't think so. Boxes and packages, yes. There was a box on the table opened. Signs and symbols, no. And money, I don't think so. So I've ruled out a bunch of different evidence that I don't think was, was in that scene. And I've got some that are maybes and some that are dead certains in my mind that I think are really going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I normally do when I play Chronicles Grand. I'm going to start with the ones that I think are like definite, right? So I'm going to start with the boxes and packages. Hopefully you can guys see this. is Great. Because I definitely think that, um, oh, it's a jewelry box. So a flat wooden box, when you open it, you see the inside is padded and used to hold some kind of jewelry, which is now missing. Oh, so put card 36 back, so not the boxes and packages. Among the evidence cards, find the jewelry card, 11. This represents the jewelry missing from the box. So I'm going to find 11. Of course, I shuffled these up, didn't I? So that's cool. So we recognize it as a box, but in closer inspection, we realize it's a jewelry box. We don't have the jewelry, though, so we put the jewelry card on the blue area of the evidence board to mark that you know about this object but haven't found it yet. So we know there's jewelry missing. There we go. So it's telling me, hopefully you can see that. We better delay, but it's catching up all right. Congratulations, you found your first clue. Now search for more. Okay, so bags and purses. There was definitely a, a bag down beside it. Oh, okay. A plain looking woman's purse. You search inside and find a receipt for some groceries with a delivery dress for a house on the city outskirts, M. Okay. Oh, let's go looking. All right. Oh, wow. This place is a little bit well to do. Hopefully, hopefully that's relatively in focus. You can get a good look at that. So we're going to put that here. So. Put the evidence card on the red area of the evidence board to mark that you physically possess this item. So I now have a woman's bag, plain looking woman's bag. Great, you find two clues on the scene. Uh, keep searching, there are five more. Okay, five more, remember that. Um, after you're done searching the scene, you can ask Charles uh, about the objects you found. Okay, oh yes, so we can speak to the manager and have a chat to him, okay, cool. Remember that all your actions take in game time. You can see the current time on the top right of the screen. Each scan takes five minutes and traveling to location takes 20 minutes. Solving the case quickly may earn you bonus points. Plan your actions wisely. For now, we suggest that you focus on finding the five remaining objects. Oh, the tutorial is being a little bit friendly. Um, Bobby is saying Agnes might have been involved in some fishy business. <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. At least I hope we're going to find out. Right. Where did I put my... Where did I put them? Here we go. So close um, is one I'm relatively sure about um, because I think the bow tie is, is... I think, Bobby, as you said, the bow tie in the hand is super relevant. So I'm going to scan close. The clenched hand of the victim holds a bow tie. A few cert buttons are scattered around the floor. The victim's shirt is covered in blood but is not missing any buttons. So this makes me think meal uh, attacker. Shirt with buttons and bow tie, I think would, would be a meal attire. That's a third clue, fine, there are four to go, okay. I'm gonna look in, I've got papers, books and magazines, writing tools, materials, letters and messages. These are four things that are all kind of close, like, uh, yeah, so finding clues takes up time, so you can't sit there scanning all the cards. You could <laughs> sit there scanning all the cards if you want, but yes, you're going to waste all your time, and you may not be able to uh, submit your case answers in time. Uh, I'm going to look for papers. There was definitely a note. Okay, numerous papers are scattered on the desk, a book among them. Put the card two back in the deck and try scanning books and magazines. Okay, we had that out already, so we knew that was going to come. Good. Okay, on the desk, you find a book, a copy of the novel Around the World in 80 Days, written by Jules Verne. It's a first edition from 1873. You flip through its pages and discover a loose piece of paper with Morse code printed across it. Well, among the puzzle cards, find number two and reveal it. Examine the card and place it face up on the table. Oh, thanks, Vince. Hello, Andy. 
So this will be a little bit too large, but we now have this puzzle card, which has Morse code for all the letters of the alphabet. So we definitely have something that we might have to decode. So I will put that, put those there. I'll put this up here. Wicked, wicked. Examine the card, place it face up on the table. Oh, and we're going to put the books and magazines here as a reminder that we have the book around the world in 40 days. 80 days, 80 days, 40 days, 80 days, 80 days, 80 days. 80 days. <laughs> Congratulations, you found a puzzle card. During the course of each scenario, you will have to solve one or more puzzles consisting of puzzle cards and information found during virtual reality scenes and interrogations. In this scenario, you'll have to find pieces of a puzzle, solve it, and then use the solution during a conversation with the manager. For now, when you finish searching the crime scene, travel back to the newspaper office and ask Charlotte about the card. She'll let you know if you have all the parts needed to solve the puzzle. Bravo, we have three more clues to find. Right, so what do we have? We have the plain uh, woman's purse. We have the bow tie and buttons. We have the around the world in 80 days. Where we now have a sheet of paper with Morse code on it. I'll just put it there. Um, blood and organs. Yeah, there was definitely blood. I don't know if there were organs, but there was definitely blood. All right. When you examine the body more closely, you find bruises on his face. You also notice he's clutching a bow tie in one fist. Shirt buttons are scattered around the floor. To find out more about these, scan the closed category card. We don't, need, we don't need to. We're all good with that. But we do have blood and organs. All right. That's another clue. There's two more left to find. So what have I? What am I missing? Do you know what I'm missing? Bree said it. Bree said it in chat. And I didn't I didn't bring it out. I, I didn't. Bree, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't lift it out. You actually, if you hadn't said it in chat, I might have completely, completely missed it. There's the photo with Agnes. <laughs> well, what we think is Agnes, right? So we definitely need to, we definitely need to scan that one because the, the, the photo on the table is totally a thing, right? Yes. Okay. A framed photo of two people, a young woman confirmed now that's Agnes and a middle-aged woman is resting on the desk. So number six. Okay. Doo -doo. So we find a framed photo. I'm gonna put that into my evidence. Um, and I mean, for now, I mean, we don't know who she is, but this is the character who is inside the photo uh, with Agnes. I said it when you said no to the other card. Thank you, Brie. I wouldn't know what I would have done without you. Um, so we, well, she knows she's in the photo. I mean, it's relevant enough for me to put her there. So, what's left? What do we not? What do we not see? There's one clue. I'm gonna try. We got the book. What else was in this scene? Oh, should we look at this scene again? Um, I like how it doesn't have names on it um, on the cards. So you don't know who it is. Yeah. Well, what I what I recommend doing if uh, if we are playing um, myself, I know I have little post-it notes or I, or I make notes as I'm playing because the idea is it's really easy to forget kind of where you are. So I normally make notes to remember who who have asked about what uh, the names of each person and what their role is. So it's very important to remember your uncle, the manager, the body, Agnes, and mystery person in the photo. Um, and I highly recommend taking time to to note down what you're doing. It really helps when you're solving the cases for real. So what have I what have I missed? What have I missed from the scene? There's one more thing left. Is, is it something about technology, you think? No, do you know what it was? It was the flowers, maybe. Do we have plants? Because I yeah, because I set aside the bottles because I thought the bottles might be, or it could be tools because it has all that equipment there. I'm going to scan plants because I think plants better than bottles. Whoop, come here, there we go. A vase with a bouquet of fresh roses. Okay, that is something. Oh, that's the final clue. You can ask about any of them while in the interrogation mode. Oh no, hold on. Agnes has a bouquet of roses on their table. And then, and some jewelry. Do we think the jewelry was a gift with the roses? And then our per deceased victim has potentially been caught in the middle between Agnes and somebody else. 
Okay, that's the current, that's my current theory. Unless you guys have a, a better theory, I would love to hear it. But right now, that's that's my working, that's my working uh, assumption. Yeah. So time to talk to the manager. Charles Perrin. This whole situation is very unfortunate for our office. I hope I can help. Yes, I would like to talk to you about everything, but I think the main thing I want to talk to you about is the body and Agnes. So I'm going to scan the victim. Oh, sugar, I've never seen this man before. It's not one of our employees. Per lad, I hope it was just an accident, but what was he doing here in the office before it was opened for opening hours? Well, that's spicy. All right. Agnes is a good employee. I've never had any complaints about her, so we can assume it's probably her desk. She is eager to work and even text the night shifts. She leaves in, lives in an apartment in the workers' district F. Oh, oh, so the purse is not Agnes's? Because this is a different location. E F. And very much... Well, hold on a second. The purse was plain which if Agnes was working in a telegram office and living somewhere a little bit more uh, downtrodden, this would maybe make sense that the purse was Agnes's. So was she being given flowers and jewelry by someone from here, this location? Interesting. So that's fine. So we know a bit about Agnes. We know a bit... Um, the jewellery I'm going to ask him about. We don't know. We don't have the jewellery, but he might know someone who bought it. The box found on Agnes's desk was empty. It's a gift she received from an admirer. At least that's what I've heard. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Search the special, the special item cards for the card number two. Oh, and put it in the blue area of the evidence board. You can ask characters about special item cards the same way you can ask about evidence category cards. Oh, dang. What's going on, Agnes? Where have you gone? All right. Let's continue to question him. What's interesting, the roses are probably going to be from the same admirer, right? But you know what? Let's just, let's just double check. I don't remember seeing them... Uh, here when I left the office yesterday, it's Agnes's desk, another gift from her admirer, perhaps. I wonder if the jewelry and the roses are from two different admirers. That would be interesting. Uh, who's in the photo with Agnes? That's Agnes, uh, Agnes in the photo, but I don't recognize the other lady. Maybe it's someone from her family. Okay, that's fair. I don't think I need to ask about the blood and organs. The Brigand magazine? Maybe, actually. Anything you can tell us about the Morse code? Um, or about, of course, about the Render 180 Days. I've heard that's a good story. Maybe I heard it from Agnes. Oh, well, that's when it's her desk, it's her book. That's fine. Bow tie. I feel like asking about the bow tie is a little bit of a stretch, but at this stage, I'm not letting the manager go without telling me everything he knows. I don't recognize these, but surely they didn't belong to the victim. Well, the bow tie and buttons, we certainly agree. I think we all knew it didn't uh, belong to the victim. And finally, the purse. Oh, so the purse does, the bag does belong to Agnes. I wouldn't dare look through a woman's personal items, but perhaps these circumstances call for extreme measures. Oh, dang. So hold on a minute. There was, there was a receipt for groceries with an address for here oh what's going on i wonder if he can tell me anything more about this admirer oh he, he can tell us something about the admirer here we go i don't want to spread any rumors but i've heard that agnes has an admirer it's a telegraph operator from an office in another city but i don't know who it could be if i knew his name i could check our registry and find the right person to solve the puzzle featured in this tutorial scenario, you need to find the name of the mysterious admirer. When you figure it out, come back here and ask Charles using the admirer card, okay? You need to remember that. So admirer card and Charles to be work out who it is. The game will switch to a, a special puzzle interface where you'll be asked about the name and given a choice between multiple answers. 
Choosing the right one will indicate that you've solved the puzzle and you'll be awarded with information useful in your investigation. If you want to see what the interface looks like, you can ask Charles about the Amira card again. We'll, we'll wait, right? Um, oh, Bobby is, I love it. She could be buying groceries for the older person in the photo. That's why there was a, re a receipt. Yes, that would make sense. Um, probably a relative could have sneezed. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, yeah, like that, that would make sense for sure, I think. Um, I don't think we need to ask about anything else at this point. I think we're, so where are we going? Are we going to go to Agnes's apartment or the location where the receipt was, was pointing to, or do we head back to the newspaper office and ask Charlotte, if we've got enough puzzle cards to do the puzzle, I must admit, I think we need to find more. I'm not feeling like this Morse code um, is enough. I feel like we need to find some relevant information. So I'm I'm not going to run back to Charlotte just yet. I don't think. So where are we going? Are we going to go to Agnes's home, or which would be here, or are we going to go to the location that the receipt was pointing to? Your shout chat. Hmm. Mm -mm. I feel like I feel like chasing out Agnes is where I want to go. Bobby says Agnes is home. Um, I feel like that's that's kind of what I want to do. Finding Agnes, yes, yeah. Bobby nailed exactly what I was going to say. Um, we need to check in on her, just find out, make sure that she's not um, in danger more than anything. So yeah, let us scan that location and see where we get told. You eventually find an apartment in the workers' neighborhood. A small, slender woman opens the door, looking very surprised to see you. You have managed to locate a character you heard about earlier. Move the card for Agnes from the unlocated character slot in the evidence board to the current location, F. Correct location, F, sorry. Hello, Agnes. Uh, what brings you here, Monsieur? Monsieur? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, we've got to open with the body, right? I mean... His name is Horace Granger, and he's the youngest son of the Granger family. They're rich Parisians who own factories all around the country. I used to work in the Granger's villa as a servant. All right, so M, she's alive. Yeah, she is alive, Bobby, which is, which is a good start. Back then, Horace harassed me constantly, trying to corner me and getting me alone. It was extremely frightening. I told him that I wasn't interested in to leave me alone. It got so bad that I had to quit. He found out where I worked and came to the office yesterday night when I was alone. He attacked me. I, I, was, uh, I tried to push him away, but he tripped and fell down. I swear that was what happened. Oh. Oh, is there... Is she covering for someone? Is she covering for, she didn't push him, right? The bow tie and the buttons tell us that she didn't push him. Or at least at least there was bruising and stuff beforehand. Yeah, right? Or maybe she pushed him and, and bruised him and he fell or something. But then, oh, okay. I'm going to ask about the admirer. That's just a rumor. We talk on the wire sometimes, but it's nothing serious. Oh, we're learning about telephones now. Don't forget to visit Charlotte in the newspaper editorial office. Ask her about the puzzle cards to find out if you have all the parts needed to solve it. Oh, we're being prompted to go back to Charlotte now. I'm going to keep questioning. Uh, it is uncommon for women to wear a bow tie in the 1900s. I think you're correct, Bobby. I would be under that assumption too. If we were playing 2400s, maybe a completely different story, or even 2000. Um... I'm going to continue pressing on her. I need to know about the photo, the person, uh, not the Morse code maybe, but the flowers for sure, right? We've got a lot to do here. Yes, I like roses. That's not a crime, is it? Oh, she's being a bit sassy. Oh, Agnes is being, she's throwing us a little bit of shade. All right, all right. My dear aunt has always supported me. I know she wants what's best for me. She works at the Granger's Villa. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm going to move her. 
I don't think we know 100% that she's there yet. But I'm going to move her there for now to keep myself um, taken over. So, Ant, okay. Um, jewelry. Who gave you the jewelry? Yes, that belongs to me. It's valuable, so I give it to my aunt. I didn't want to keep it here, especially as I'm working most of the time. She gave it to her aunt out of the box? Oh, Agnes, I'm sus I was coming here thinking you were in trouble, and now you've made me terribly, terribly suspicious. Uh, let's try and see if she says anything about the manager. I I've kind of written the manager off as a suspect at this point, but let's just see, make sure she doesn't say, oh, something awful. I'm really sorry I didn't speak with Monsieur Perrin. I was terrified and scared. I couldn't stay in that office any longer. I was about to return and explain everything. Okay, all right, okay. Let's ask about her. Oh, her bag with the receipt, right? But yeah, you'd give the jewelry with the box, Bobby. That's kind of, I'm feeling a little bit suspect. Now I'm starting to think, was the jewelry stolen from the, like the, the, the fancy house? So about the woman's bag, yes, that's mine. I must have left it in the office when I ran away. Okay. Interesting. What else do we want to ask Agnes about? I feel like Agnes has been a little bit of a dead end. And let's ask her about the bow tie just on the off chance that she happens to recognize it in case she knows someone who wore it. I, oh, that subtle stutter. I, I don't know how they got there. Are you sure they don't belong to Horace? Oh, Agnes, you guilty, or at least you suspicious, suspected of being related to this guilty. Okay. I think it's time to go visit the aunt, but I'm going to go back to Charlotte first to see if Charlotte can help us piece together what to do with this puzzle card. Because at the moment, I'm not sure we have enough bubbles. Oh, sorry. I scanned Charlotte, but what I need to do is I need to scan the office to go back to the office. You return to the office. Charlotte is sitting at her desk, tapping rapidly. Jonas is busy in his office. If you're ready to finish this scenario, tap the Solve the Case button. It's located in the newspaper office location. You'll be asked a series of questions about the case. To answer them, scan the correct cards. Your score will depend on your answers. We're definitely not ready to solve the case, I don't think. Um, I certainly think Charlotte can tell us. So if you're struggling with any kind of puzzle, I'll be happy to help you. Charlotte plays a special role in Chronicles of Crime 1900. When you find a puzzle card, so when you find puzzle cards or evidence category cards and special item cards connected to a puzzle, you can ask her about them to see if you have all the parts needed to solve it. When you have all the required parts, asking Charlotte about the puzzle will allow you to get a hint. Asking again gives you a full solution to the puzzle. However, hints and solutions come with a 10 point penalty when scenarios are scored. Oh. So let's scan the Morse code and see. Okay, you haven't found all the elements required to solve this puzzle. I didn't think so, so that's fine. So let we don't need Charlotte for now. Let's go and see if we can find the ant. So I'm really what am I looking for right now? I'm looking for either the gentleman who Agnes has been talking to on the wire, the other admirer. Um or I'm looking for someone in the household that might be tied to the jewelry, right? That's kind of, the, yeah, going to this state. So at the Granger's Villa, because he's, yeah, he's the youngest, wasn't he, of the Granger family? You travel to the outskirts of Paris looking for the address you find. Eventually, you come across a quiet alley surrounded in all sides by rich villas. When you knock on the door, it is opened by a servant. Six, aha, we know her. You explain the reason for your visit. She disappears for a moment. She informs you the owner of the house is willing to speak to you. Oh, all right. Does the owner know about Horace? Yeah, why is Agnes covering for someone is absolutely a question we need to have answered, for sure. Um, so this is the owner of the house. Let's go and have a chat. Hello. Beatrice Granger, what's the reason for your visit? Well, I'll tell you the reason. Sorry. 
Uh, that's my son you're talking about. Horace is dead. My God in heaven, what happened? Asking about certain things may change how the character responds to your questions. Ah, maybe you shouldn't have opened with the bad news. They may reveal more or change uh, attitude to you completely. Answers to the same questions may change dramatically. Oh, goodness me. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, she's going to cooperate because of what I've just said. Um, I hope. Okay, let's let's work our way through. Let's start with... I don't want to start with blood and organs, right? That's kind of startling. Let's start with Agnes. Whoa, my word. That woman is the devil incarnate. Seducing my son, probably trying to get her hands on his fortune. Now she's killed him because she couldn't get what she wanted. Arrest her now. Oof. Well, holy escalation, Batman. Um, I mean, she's not going to know anything about the secret admirer, right? Let's ask her about the ant. She's the one who brought that devil into my house. I'll speak with her later. Oh, my word. Mm, let's try. Why was the address in this? Oh, no. She wasn't happy to talk to me about the bag. Too quick to cast blame. Beatrice is sus. Beatrice is certainly sus. Absolutely agree. Um, I'm going to ask about the blood. Oh, no. Oh, good. I shouldn't have asked. I knew I shouldn't have asked. I don't know why I would... <laughs> I see. I was like, no, don't. don't. Well, I hope she's not going to send me away. No, okay, we still got a chance to talk to her before she gets really annoyed. Um, let's try the bow tie. No, it doesn't belong to my son. Why would you ask me that? Okay, so we knew. I mean, we knew this. We suspected this, but now we know for sure. Okay, here's the thing that might re that might really set her off. We need to find out if the jewelry is like a Granger jewel, or like necklace or something. So pray that she doesn't absolutely go mad at us now. Nope. She didn't want to share that. Interesting. All right. Oh, Beatrice. Beatrice, Beatrice, you're really conflicting me. Yeah. I was hoping, I was hoping to get more from her than that. Um, more than just than just accusations. Let's have a chat to the ant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Not gonna lie, Bobby. Wasn't the, <laughs> wasn't the best line of questioning. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Shh. 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 <laughs> Is there anything I can do? Says Edith Canard. Well. You can tell me about Agnes. Agnes is my niece. She's a good girl. I got her a job here at the house, but she really didn't like it. She's always been a small and fragile person. Okay, so we know Agnes didn't push Horace to his death. Housework was never a good match for her, so it's good she found work in the telegraph office. She left this villa the first chance she got and moved closer to the city. I don't blame her she says, lowering her voice, considering all the trouble with Monsieur Horace. Oh, folks, what, 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 what's happening here? Who, who was suggesting who, who was harassing who? I really feel like Horace, right, working, working the solution here. Agnes is protecting her uh, love interest or admirer because they pushed Horace through the railing because Agnes couldn't have and we assume that Horace was harassing Agnes and Mother Beatrice is just a little bit of protective mother maybe that's currently the line okay I want to ask about the admirer come on Edith don't hold out on me here it's important an admirer 
She never tells me anything. When she worked here in the villa, Monsieur Horace often made advances on Agnes. She always rejected him, but he never gave up. I don't know about any other admirer. Oh, man. Dang. I think you've ruined it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, did we, we didn't ask her about the jewelry yet, right? Oh, oh, something's going on. You're the second young man to ask about Agnes's jewellery today. The other one came in this morning saying Agnes asked him to fetch the medallion. His face was bruised and his clothes were torn. Oh, this is the suspect. I asked him to leave. But from what you're saying, the police are interested in Agnes. Is she a suspect? I don't believe they care about finding the right person. They care only for the rich and well-born, not for us common folk. Oh, Edith. You, on the other hand, look like a decent young man. Please take it. And prove that my Agnes is innocent. Take what? Take what, Agnes? Take what exactly? Oh, mama. We have a new puzzle card. And it is this uh, locket, this brooch, this medallion even. If I get the word right eventually. Okay. I don't know where she got it, but she wanted me to keep it for her. When I asked about it, she said something like blues are short and reds are long. All right, I'm going to need you guys to get a pen and paper, please. We're going to be doing Morse code in a minute. <laughs> blues are short and reds are long. And whites are spaces. Blues are short and reds. Right, folks. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to need a pen and paper. Right, I got a pen. I might have to get up and go about get a piece of paper. Yeah, okay, bear with me. I'm back in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, stuff is happening. So we're gonna I'm gonna get myself a little sheet a sheet of paper here. See, this is why I should be taking notes. Should have had should have had my notepad ready at ready at hand. So what she said, blues, blues are short. And reds are long. I don't know what that means. She's so mysterious sometimes. We know. <laughs> we know. Congratulations, you found a puzzle card. Notice that Edith shared with you a third clue about the puzzle, uh, saying blues are short and reds are long. Thank goodness it's a tutorial. Oh, sometimes part of the information needed to solve a puzzle is not found on a puzzle card, uh, but instead uncovered during the course of the scenario. Go back to the newspaper office and ask Charlotte about the card. She'll let you know if you have all the parts needed to solve the puzzle. I think we do, but we'll go back just to fulfill the tutorial. When you have all the parts, it's up to you to uncover the rest of the scenario secrets. Good luck. Move the jewelry card from the blue area on the evidence board to the red area as you now possess the medallion. That makes perfect sense. Okay. What's the best way for me to show you this medallion? Hopefully, my orange screen, green screen technology will not will not prevent us from seeing this. Let's go back to Charlotte. I mean, I'm almost certain that we're going to get a name here. So we return to the office. Let's speak to Charlotte. And let's ask her, do we have all the pieces of this puzzle? You have every element required to solve this puzzle. Do you want me to help you? No, 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 no. We got this. We got this. Right, you chill there for a second. So um, I'm assuming whites are just spaces then. So I'm going to start up here. We've got blue, red. So that's dot, dash. We've got red, red, blue. So that's dash, dash, dot. We've got red, blue. Uh, so that's dash, dot. We've got single blue. So that's just dot. Uh, triple blue. So dot 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 and i'm going to be referring to this in a second uh can you show that can you see that hopefully the, the stream's catching up so you can see it there um dot 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 so we've then got blue red 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 so dot dash 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 then we've got single blue for a dot blue red dot dash red blue dash dot blue red I think that was the first one I did, right? I did blue-red first. Um, so 
my incredible, incredible notes here. So I've looked basically at the blue, red, 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 blue, red, blue, 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 and I've basically try transcribed them. And now I'm going to try and match them up with what's here. So sorry, it's going to be a little bit out of shot. So um, dash or dot dash is A. Dash dash dot is G. Oh, is this just going to be Agnes? Uh, dash dot is N, dot is E, this is going to be Agnes, dot 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 is S, dot triple dash is J, O, single dot is E, um, then we got dot dash is A again, and then dash dot is dash dot dash dot is n okay it says agnes and jean so i've got a g n e s and then j e a n that's not showing up at all agnes and then jean okay so now i want to head back to the telegraph office and ask the manager to look for jean in the directory and hopefully Jean is enough to find out who the person is on the other end of the wire, right? Because her name was not Agnes Jean. Her name was Agnes Canard, right? Flip back through the history. Edith Canard, Beatrice Granger. Agnes Noel. Yeah, so the Jean is definitely not, uh, is definitely not her name. Jean is definitely got to be the admirer's name. So I'm going to head back to the uh, telegram office. You once again arrive at the office. You see the body and the office manager. Your uncle is no longer here. During the scenario, characters will sometimes change the location and move to another. This can happen because of your actions or characters may pursue their own goals and move by themselves. When you visit the telegraph office, don't forget that Charles Perrin is waiting for you to uncover the name of Agnes's secret admirer. To switch the puzzle interface, just ask him about the special item card too. All right, well, our uncle's disappeared, so he's now MIA. <laughs> Thanks, uncle. All right, Charles. Give us a chance. Do you know the name of Agnes's admirer? Yes, certainly. Let me get the papers. I have a few folders in the registry. What's the first letter of the telegraph operator's name? What's well, F to J? Give me a moment. Ah, here it is. What's his first name? Jean. I think this is it. I'm going to write this down just in case. Get my pen back out. Jean Fosse. All right. 14. He is working at our office in Lille. All right. What an amazing tutorial this is. Just as a reminder, in case anyone has jumped in, this is just the tutorial. <laughs> and you have four full cases to do. And this is just a small introduction. I think this is it. Jean Fosse is working at our office in Lille. That's interesting. I have a message here that he came to Paris for a few days. He rented a hotel room not far from the train station. I, oh, Jean, I'm coming to get you. Right, I'm going to I'm run that space a little bit now. We're going to put Jean over there at I. Assuming that's where he might still be. All right, bye, Charles. We've got places to be, buddy. Well, let's go. Hotel near the train station. You find the hotel located not far from the train station. While looking for the room number, you come across a man. Hello, Jean. Come here. The man has a bruised face and his shirt is missing a few buttons. Can I help you with something? He asks. I, uh, I'm in a hurry. I bet you are. Congratulations, you found Agnes's mysterious admirer. Remember that in Chronicles of Crime 1900, you don't always need to have irrefutable proof or make the perpetrator admit their guilt in order to finish the scenario. Usually a few clues and some logical reasoning are enough to answer the final questions. Well, do you know what? I'm still going to like go after him with the hard evidence and see if I can break him. I'm not sure if we've ever had the opportunity to meet. Oh, Jean, don't even start. 
what about Agnes, huh? Agnes, I'm not sure who you're asking. Jean, like, buddy, look, don't just bold face lie to my face. Don't even. Let's scan the amulet and see if he said anything about that. I don't know anything about any medallion. I mean, do we believe him? What about the blood? I don't like. Look at me. Do I look like a secret? Do I look like secret lover material? I don't know, Sean. You're not a bad looking guy. I, I, hey, you know, what does a secret lover look like, really? I mean, right now, I feel like we have enough evidence to to give it to the police and create it, write a story about it and send it. I'm just like, I would kind of, I'm always after a good confession, but I feel like we don't need it. I think we're going to, I think we're going to, oh, I should ask. The, about the housemaid because she he came to the house didn't he? Oh, I don't know that person. Do you have any other questions? Oh, what a bold faced fibber you are, Jean. All right. What do you think? Do you think we should go and try and solve? I think we're probably there unless we uh, go and speak to Agnes and ask Agnes about Jean. But I feel like we've probably got enough to prove. The bow, the bow tie, the buttons, the medallion, the coded name. I think, I think we've got enough. So I'm going to head back to the newspaper office, and we are going to try and solve this thing. So, solve the case. You're about to try and solve the case and end the game. Are you sure? Yes. Who killed Horace Granger? Well, I believe, and I'm hoping that you all agree, that it was our man Jean. Where is Agnes's admirer now? Well, currently is at the train station or the hotel near the train station. Why did Agnes leave her work at the Granger's villa? Oh, why did Agnes leave her work? Because of Horace, right? Because of Horace's harassment? Good job. Good job, you're able to figure out who accidentally killed Horace. You've also been able to locate his current whereabouts. Moreover, you've discovered the real reason Agnes left the Granger's villa and decided to pursue the career of telegraph operator. You've finished the tutorial scenario. You can choose to replay it by going to the main menu or have the whole case explained by tapping the solution button. You're now ready for a real challenge, the full-length scenarios of Chronicles of Crime 1900. Whoop, whoop. Here we go. Um, so case closed in 6 hours 40. We got bonus points because we did it in less than 12 hours game time. We got who killed Horace. We got who was the admirer. And we got why she left the work. We'll read the solution. I always like to read the solution because it's good. The victim was Horace Granger. He lived in the Granger's villa where Agnes used to work as a servant. He was notorious for bothering her, being intrusive and trying to exploit his position. She, re she rejected his advances from the very beginning. However, Horace persisted in harassing her, so Agnes was forced to leave the house and find an independent modern job. While working at the telegraph office, she began to exchange messages with Jean, another telegraph operator from the office in Lille. Romance quickly blossomed over the wire between them. Jean often sent Agnes gifts, one of which was a heart-shaped medallion with the lovers' names written in Morse code. Oh, I wonder if Jean gave her the book with the Morse code inside it. Oh, he does look like secret admirer lover material. Jean took business trips to Paris whenever possible. During those trips, he would visit Agnes in the office while she worked her night shifts. Unfortunately, Horace Granger hadn't uh, given up on Agnes and decided to surprise her at work. He found the two lovers upstairs and in his fury attacked Jean. The fight between the two men came to a sudden end when Jean pushed Horace backwards. He fell through a set of railings and crushed his skull against the floor. Fearing for her lover, Agnes asked Jean to request some jewellery from her aunt and use it if he needed to flee his job and hide. Oh. She was certain that telling the police she had pushed Horace in self-defence would be enough for a cover, especially considering his history of abusive behaviour towards her. And there you go. That was the tutorial of Chronicles of Crime 1900. If you play the game yourself, you will have four cases after the tutorial that are going to be considerably bigger than that, <laughs> with considerably less guidance as well, uh, to see you through. Um, the game's due to come out next week. Let me make myself a little bit bigger here. Um, so yeah, the game is due to come out uh, next week on the 27th. I hope that's right. Um, yes, 27th. Um, and will be available in English, Polish, and French immediately. And then further languages, Italian, German, and Spanish, a little bit later as well. And they'll be updated automatically in the app. So 
yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Give you a feel for what to expect from the cases and give you a little bit of what's unique in 1900. Um, I had a blast. That was really good fun. And I love how the suspicions changed and flipped back and forth and went uh, left and right and eventually kind of got to yeah, the right place. I'm very happy with how that one went. I know it was the tutorial, but I'm still going to self high five and um, well look uh, if anyone has any questions please feel free to pop them out now if you haven't checked out the game you can do so on lucky.games.com we're also there's also a video on watch it played um um on watch it played's uh, youtube channel where you can go and check out the details of how to play as well uh, andrew says for kickstarter backers are the new scenarios already available yes they are yes they are the, the english ones have been available for a couple of weeks actually and um, we've just had a little bit of delay in the french and polish ones but as of right now when you're watching this live or when you're watching this later, they are indeed available. The last case, case number four, will be released um, next Thursday uh, at the game's release. Cool. Well, look, thank you, everybody. I am going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you so much for coming along and watching. And we're going to finish and wrap up this stream and uh, put on that beautiful video again, hopefully, that teases 1900. And I'll see you all on a stream again soon. Actually, if you're still here, on Friday this week, I'll be back with the one and only Vince Vergenjean, CEO of Lucky Duck Games, talking about 1900, but also Destinies and King of 12 and a few little bits of information about what's coming later this year. Uh, and he says, my phone is in for repair at the moment, so we'll be playing it once I get it back. Super glad to hear it. I hope you have a blast with it, sir. Uh, and yeah, for now, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Have a, a lovely day, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you soon. Home.